this is going to be a little bit of a different video than I'm used to recording. It's essentially I'm going to go over just a topic in psychology and see what happens. And the topic I wanted to talk about is this thing called the halo effect. And the halo effect is the tendency for positive impressions of a person, company, band, or product in one area to positively influence one's opinion or feelings in another. So one of the most classic examples of the halo effect is this idea of beauty is good. So if you have a supermodel or an actor that you really like and you find them attractive or an artist uh, or a YouTuber, you might assume that because they are attractive, they are also ethically sound or they the, because they're attractive, they might be smarter than the average person. So this is called the halo effect. It's when one component of someone's behavior is perceived to be related to another component. And it's called a cognitive bias. A cognitive bias is essentially just almost like a misperception of the world. Now, I looked into it a very small amount, and there might be some relationships between uh, attraction and intelligence, but I think there's a lot of complications there. But what I wanted to talk about today was this interesting study that I don't think is currently published, but it's being submitted for publication. It is out of a graduate school of the arts in uh, someplace in Germany, also collaborating with people in Japan. And they're essentially looking at the cross-cultural differences of the halo effect specifically on how it affects or how it relates to bodies. Um, so there's been a lot of work done in this area that looks at how people's perceptions of faces influence different components of judgment. So how an attractive face is often related to intelligence. And what this study wanted to do was two things. The first was they wanted to look at how people's perceptions of bodies related to different characteristics does having a nice or attractive body lead people to perceiving you as also less dominating or something like that? So what did they do? This is uh, the abstract. I'm just going to read it briefly. According to the halo effect, person's perceptions are globally biased by specific traits or characteristics. Attractive people are attributed positive traits like pro-sociality, health, and dominance. However, Due to a strong focus on facial stimuli, it remains unclear whether this effect can also be found for bodies. So what they're, what they're essentially saying is that we've looked at a bunch of people perceiving faces and found that attractive people are seen as more pro-social, healthy, and dominant. And what we're curious about here is, does this also apply to people's bodies? If I just had you look at somebody's body. Typically, most studies look at this thing called an individualistic culture. So this is kind of a bit of a dicey term that I have a hard time really nailing down. But an individualistic culture is one where the focus is on the person and their own success, whereas a collectivistic culture is oftentimes more focused on keeping the group cohesive and looking after the well-being of the group. The United States is often generally considered a pretty individualistic culture, whereas Japan would fall roughly into a more collectivistic culture. And there's a lot of probably subtle criticism you can make of that, but generally that's the distinction. And so what these people did was they took a bunch of photos and 3D body scans of 165 German men, which is kind of an important thing to remember. And we'll talk about that later. And they had people from a German culture and from a Japanese culture rate how attractive, pro-social, healthy, and dominant they seemed based just on their face and their bodies. And so what they essentially found was that both groups responded pretty similarly in terms of the halo effects that have been observed in the past. However, there was a dominance effect that occurred mostly for the bodies and not for the faces. So it seems like when we judge about whether or not a person is dominant, a big part of it has to do with how their body looks as opposed to their face. And it seems as if this is cross-culturally uh, preserved. What, where's the data and sort of what's this getting at? I guess the first thing I wanted to show was this table right here. So this table was a little confusing at first, but I think I understand it now. So what you see here is 
a bivariate Pearson correlation. And what essentially that means is there's a relationship. So when we say correlation, all we mean is that there's a relationship between two things. So if we say temperature is positively correlated with ice cream sales, that means that the hotter it gets out, the more ice cream sales go up, which makes sense because people want like a cool snack during hot times, right? So what we see here is you're looking at a correlation just like we looked at with temperature and ice cream sales between something like attractiveness and health. So I perceive them to be attractive and I also perceive them to be healthy. So if it's positive, that means that the more healthy they are, the more attractive they seem. So this is a 0.55 correlation and that's like a pretty big correlation. So what we're seeing here is that for things related to face, you are getting that halo effect on almost all of the variables. So when people perceive you as attractive, they also perceive you as healthy and pro-social. And just for the user to look onto, this is specifically the Japanese group here. And this is specifically the German group. And what we see is something kind of interesting that for facial judgments, there does not seem to be a correlation for dominance for both groups. So the Japanese correlation is here and the dominance for attractiveness is over here. So it seems as if finding faces attractive doesn't necessarily mean we will perceive them as dominant or not. Now, if we keep on going, we get to table three, and this is where the study starts to become new within the context of, of like this type of research, because they're looking specifically at body ratings. So again, this whole area here is considered the, the Japanese population, and this whole area here is considered the German population. And what we find is that for bodily ratings in both the German and Japanese observer, when you go down here and look at dominance and attractiveness, they actually do show up. So what we find here is that across the board, the body seems to be the thing that leads people to being perceived as dominant. So above where the face showed no halo effect, no relationship between attractiveness and dominance. Here, when we look at the body, we see that dominance and attractiveness does have the halo effect for both the Japanese and the German populations. So right now we've seen that the groups are similar. The Japanese and the Germans both have this halo effect to about the same degree. So, so far we've essentially seen that these two groups are the same in terms of how the halo effect shows up in the data. But what's interesting is that there is a difference on one key variable and that has to do with the halo effect, its relationship between health and pro-sociality. So within the Japanese cohort, if we go here and we look pro-social and we look at health, which gives us this number, there's a pretty big positive correlation. So when, the, when these Japanese uh, individuals look at a body, they perceive it as pro-social in relation to its health. So the more they perceive it as healthy, the more they perceive it as pro-social. However, when you look at the Germans, when they perceive the health of the body, it does not correlate with how pro-social they perceive it. So they might see a body that's healthy and perceive it in a pro-social way. They might see a body that's unhealthy and perceive it in a pro-social way. They might see the, the inverse of that. There's, there's no predictable relationship in this data set between health and pro-sociality in the Germans. So the Japanese, uh, individuals within this study uh, perceive that relationship, that halo effect is there, but the halo effect is not there for the pro-social uh, health within the German group. So this is um, just kind of an interesting study that outlines some of the halo effect. And it's actually not published yet, I don't think. This is something that's being submitted for peer review, but I found it and I also found it kind of interesting. And there's a number of criticisms I have of this study. So anytime you're doing science, you're gonna have some type of criticism. And I think the first is probably that we're only looking at uh, one gender here. We're only looking at men. 
uh, the per, their perception of men within this study. Um, they did have a pretty good breakdown when you look at the actual gender of the perceivers. So I think they had a pretty fairly even men to woman um, uh, split, but the perceiving of the bodies, you're only looking at men, German men specifically. So it, I'd be curious if there would be a noticeable difference if you had Asian bodies as opposed to German bodies and really what that even means. Yeah, I think that's the gist of the halo effect and you can kind of see it playing out in the data. I hope this makes sense and we will uh, we'll go into it a little bit more. Bye-bye.